oh, I was totally struggling on the bars there. Just didn't have the legs for that FTP test. I don't know why I didn't just forget about my splits and chill out with a bit of a loosener on the trainer, sticking in zone one. I mean, rather than trying to hit my LTH. Oh, it was just crazy, but can't wait for a taper when I can start to get the feel. But a few pickups should help with that, I think. Hang on, stay with me, because if that has just gone completely over your head, don't worry. I'm going to be explaining some of this jargon that you so often hear with triathlon chat. We're not talking about your coach and we're not talking about your running shoes either. This is actually one that got me when I started triathlon. As anyone talking about their trainer is actually referring to their turbo trainer. Unsurprisingly, this one comes from swimming and my coach used to talk about it all the time. It's that feeling that you know when you know. Basically, getting a feel for the water means feeling good, it's quite often put into your training program when maybe you've been out of the water for a little while, or you've been traveling, and you might have to get in and just get a feel for the water. So you're getting a good catch and you just feel strong. Here we're referring to the aero bars on a TT bike. You might have to come off the bars if, say, you've got a technical or steep descent. And maybe in poor weather conditions, you might hear athletes talking about hardly spending any time on the bars, basically meaning they will have had to be on the base bars of their bike instead of in the aero position in order to control their bike. This one takes us back to the pool. If you swim with a squad, you might hear the coach saying, leave five or leave 10. Well, they're referring to the number of seconds that you need to leave between you and the swimmer in front. Another terminology that's referring to the clock will be going on the top, the bottom, or maybe on the 15. Well, that's quite simply referring to where the second hand is on the clock. And if it's a digital clock in your pool, then that's basically gonna be on naught seconds, 15 seconds, or 30 seconds, for example. Some days are harder than others, and if you've been set a tough session that doesn't quite go to plan, then maybe it's because you don't have the legs that day. If you hear someone saying that, well, they're basically referring to feeling rather tired. And if a session is, say, set to power numbers or times to hit, then you might hear people saying, just not hitting the numbers. Again, another reference to just the session not quite going to plan. Really, we need a whole other video for these effort level terms. But if someone says to you they're doing an FTP test or they're doing a VO2 or LTHR session, that basically means it's a hard effort. For example, the VO2 is your maximal oxygen intake, LTHR is your lactic threshold heart rate, and FTP is your functional threshold power test. And that's basically your maximum effort that you can maintain for one hour. I love this one. It's the wind down and training load as you get close to a race. Basically, your training is going to get easier so that your body can start to feel good and you're going to be conditioned perfectly for race day. These are often used within a taper. It's about getting your legs to feel good. So if you've had a hard session the day before, then you might be instructed to just go for a bit of a spin on the bike or a run to loosen up the legs. Another one is pickups. This basically refers to going and doing a fairly easy level effort, but with some increases in pace and intensity for very short periods of time. And they're just designed to help you feel good, often put in, again, just the day before a race. You might have been out on a bike ride and heard someone say, oh, I can't go any faster today because I'm in zone two training. Well, generally speaking, there are five zones that refer to effort levels that's measured on power or heart rate. And they go from one to five, one being the easiest, five being the hardest. That should have filled in a few gaps so the next time a friend or training partner talks about the splits from their LTHR session they did on their trainer, you don't just have to nod and smile awkwardly. But if there were any terms that used to confuse you that you now know what they mean, do share them in the comments section below. Or if there's any that we've missed out, let us know as well. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hit the thumb up button and see that globe on the screen. Give it a tap to make sure you get all of our videos here at GTN. If you want a video on common swimming mistakes so that you don't have to make them, you can find that down here. And if you want some more jargon busters, well, Mark actually made a video and that one's down here.